Good day, everyone. I am Dr. Adenka Badebo. I'm a first class graduate from the University of Ibado, a first class graduate of zoology from the University of Ibado, Nigeria. I am your biology lecturer. In this video, I will take I'll be taking you on introductory genetics. I'll be taking you on introductory genetics. Please um, this is my YouTube channel. This is my YouTube channel. Um, I want you to like this channel, share this channel, and then subscribe to this channel. Please don't forget to hit the notification button as well. Make sure you hit the notification button. Okay? So, in this video, I'll be taking you on introductory genetics. So, for this particular lecture, the topic I'll be elucidating is DNA structure. DNA structure. In my previous lecture, I have simplified the concept of DNA and DNA as the genetic material. We have looked at DNA as the genetic material. So, in this lecture, we are continuing from where we stopped in our previous lecture. We are looking at DNA structure. Like, what does the structure of DNA look like? What are the various chemical components that makes up the DNA, the DNA molecule? What are the how are they arranged? How do they how do they bond to each other? That is what we are trying to look at in this lecture, DNA structure. So the structure of DNA has been elucidated for so for self several years ago, it has been elucidated several years ago, and uh, DNA has been observed. The full meaning of DNA is deoxyribonucleus, deoxyribonucleic acid, deoxyribonucleic acid, okay? There's a brother to DNA, I call it a brother to DNA, which is um, RNA. RNA is ribonucleic acid, ribonucleic acid. The difference between DNA and RNA is that the ribose, the sugar, the sugar, the sugar component for DNA lacks an oxygen, oxygen atom. It, it is missing with an oxygen atom. So that is why it is called deoxy, deoxy ribonucleic acid. So DNA. So we are not we are not focusing on RNA. We are focusing on DNA structure. So the DNA has been observed to be composed of four basic molecules. Four basic molecules, these, these molecules are called nucleotides. 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 These molecules are called nucleotides. Okay? Um, and these four nucleotides are usually identical. They are identical and they contain different nitro nitrogen base. The four um, molecules that make up um, DNA, they are identical and they contain, they, they are really identical and they contain um, different nitrogen base. It is actually the nitrogen base that makes them different. The nitrogen base that makes them different. Now, each nucleotide, you know, we have said DNA contain molecules called nucleotides. Now, each nucleotide, each nucleotide in DNA is made up of three basic components. Each nucleotide is made up of three basic components. The first component is, is called a phosphate group. Phosphate group. The second component that you find in a nucleotide is sugar. We call it sugar. For DNA, it is a deoxyribose sugar, deoxyribose sugar. And then the third component you find in DNA is a nitrogen base, nitrogen These are the three components that make up a nucleotide. The phosphate group, sugar, which is a deoxyribose sugar, D of the ribose, D of the ribose sugar, D of the ribose sugar, 
is a deoxide, right? Go sugar, and then the last component of, of a nucleotide is a nitrogen base. The nitrogen base. Now, in DNA, there are the nitrogen base. You know, we said that there are four molecules that make up DNA. Now, in DNA, it is the nitrogen base that differentiates the four molecules. Now, what are these four molecules that you can find in DNA? What are these four molecules you can find in DNA? Four, sorry, what are these four nitrogen base you can find in DNA? The first one, the first nitrogen base, we call adenine. Adenine, adenine, guanine, guanine, cytosine, cytosine, and the last one is tamine. The last one is what? Tamine. Tamine. These are the four nitrogen base that you identify in the nitrogen base that makes up the nucleotide of a DNA molecule. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, and tamine. Usually, they are usually abbreviated. Adenine is abbreviated as A, guanine is abbreviated as G, and then cytosine is abbreviated as C, and then tamine is abbreviated as T. So, for short, we normally say A, G, C, T. A, G, C, T. You know, as we continue in this study, usually we will not be mentioning the full names as we will just say um, A, G, C, T as the basis you find in the, in the nucleotide of a DNA. Now, based on this nitrogen basis, the different nucleotides have a chemical nomenclature. Based on these different nucleotide, um, nitrogen bases, the different nucleotides in DNA have different chemical nomenclature. Now, um, the nucleotide that carries adenine is called deoxyadenosine. Deoxyadenosine 5' prime monophosphate. Deoxyadenosine 5' prime monophosphate. The nucleotide that carries guanine, the nucleotide that carries guanine is called is called deoxyguanosine five prime monophosphate. Deoxy deoxyadenosine adenosine five prime monophosphate. That the one that carries guanine is called deoxyadenosine 5 prime monophosphate. And so on. The nucleotide that carries cytosine is cytosine, is deox the nucleotide that carries cytosine is called deoxycytidine, cytidine, 5 prime monophosphate. And the nucleotide that carries tamine is called deoxytimidine, deoxytimidine, 5 prime monophosphate. So those are the chemical nomenclatures. Usually, they are usually abbreviated. Um, this one is abbreviated as um, DAMP. The one with adenine is abbreviated as DAMP. The one with guanine as GAMP, um, DGMP. The one with uh, with um, with cystidine is abbreviated as DCCMP, and the one with um, thymidine or thymine is abbreviated as DCMP. So they are abbreviated that way for short. So, like I've said. For the purpose of convenience, we'll be mentioning the nucle we'll be naming the nucleotides as A, G, C, T. For the sake of convenience. For the sake of convenience. For the sake of convenience, the nucleotides will be named as A, G, C, and T. So these are the different nucleotides. Okay, these are different nucleotides. Having mentioned that 
I would like to mention that two of these nitrogen bases are actually similar in structure. Two of the nitrogen bases are similar in structure. And for instance, adenine and guanine, these two, adenine and guanine, they are similar in structure. And because of their similarity in structure, they are categorized as purine bases. Purine. They are categorized as purine bases. Purine bases. Also, um, cytosine and thymine, they are similar in chemical structure and uh, they are categorized as pyrimidine bases. Pyrimidine. Pyrimidine bases. They are categorized as pyrimidine bases. So A and G, they are purine bases. C and T, they are pyrimidine bases. They are pyrimidine bases. You know, you could check up the structure of these different bases um, in a textbook. You realize that um, the realize that the you realize that the purine bases, <clears throat> the purine bases have um, the um, have the nitrogen group, the 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 amine group, the amine group, which is the nitrogen group that is attached to the to the sugar, is a double um, is a double um, polygon, is a double polygon, whereas the for the pyrimidine, they are single um, hexagons. They are single hexagons. Okay? They are, the first one, the purine, they are, the nitrogen bases form, they usually have double polygons, like two polygons as two polygons are attached together. While for the pyrimidine, they usually have a single polygon, a single hexagon, precisely. A single hexagon which forms the nitrogen group that is attached to the sugar. And they attach to the sugar. So, in to quickly elucidate the structure of a typical adenine. So, a typical adenine, a typical adenine, a typical adenine. The structure it has a sugar group, a ribose sugar. Then it carries. Um, I was saying then that it has two double polygons. These are the double polygons I was referring to. And then on this side, it carries a phosphate. On this side, it carries a phosphate group. It carries a phosphate group on this side. So this is a typical structure of, of an adenine and guanine. They usually carry this is the nitrogen, nitrogen um, base that is attached to it. Okay? This is the typical structure of a nucleotide. Typical structure of a nucleotide for a purine. A purine nucleotide. There is a nitrogen base, there is a ribose, deoxyribose sugar, deoxyribose sugar, and then there is a phosphate group. For a pyrimidine base, this is a single hexagon. For a pyrimidine base, this is a single hexagon. Okay? This is a single hexagon. For a pyrimidine base, that is the cytosine and thymine, this is a single hexagon. And um, this is the typical structure for a pyrimidine base. Either for a pyrimidine nucleotide, for a pyrimidine nucleotide, you know, once you put these three com three components together, you are talking of a nucleotide. Once you put these three components, the the sugar, the nitrogen base, and the phosphate group, you are talking of a nucleotide. Okay, that is a nucleotide. So the, having a single ring, a single polygonal ring, in this structure makes it a pyrimidine, a pyrimidine um, nucleotide. The pyrimidine nucleotide. So it can either be 
a cytosine or a thymine. And usually, this um, in in nomenclature, it is usually the carbon the carbon units. The carbon units in this sugar is usually labeled clockwise. The carbon unit is labeled clockwise. The, the carbon unit at this junction is labeled one. So you move clockwisely, the carbon unit is labeled two. Precisely one prime. The carbon unit is labeled one prime. The carbon unit is labeled two prime. This is labeled three prime. The carbon unit is labeled four prime. And then this last carbon here is labeled five prime. Okay? Let me repeat that. The carbon unit on the sugar is labeled clockwise, starting with this here. And this is called one prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, and five prime. So the prime is to differentiate the carbon unit on the sugar and the carbon unit on the nitrogen base. The, the prime is to differentiate the carbon on the sugar and the carbon on the nitrogenous base. Usually, the nitrogenous base is labeled anticlockwise. The carbon unit in the, in the, in the nitrogenous base is labeled anticlockwise. One, and there is no prime. Like I said, the prime is to differentiate the carbon unit. So it's labeled anticlockwise, starting from the carbon that is attached to the sugar. One, and it's labeled anticlockwise. Two, three, four, five, and then six without the prime. It is only the carbon unit that is on the, is the carbon unit that is on the um, sugar that carries the prime to differentiate during nomenclature. To differentiate during nomenclature. Scientists, the scientists that put together the, 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 the accepted, the first accepted structure of the DNA is Watson and Crick. In 1953, this first 1953, Watson and Crick is the first scientist. Are the first scientists Watson and Crick? There are two people, you know. One is the supervisor. One was the PhD student. They were the first set of scientists to elucidate the the structure of of the DNA. They, they elucidated the structure of the DNA, and they observed that. The DNA is a double helix. The other that the DNA what is a double helix. Okay, so like I said, Watson and Crick were able to elucidate that the DNA structure is a double helix. The double helix. Um, don't mind my board. This is supposed to be to your left. To your left. To your left or to your own right, which is okay. To your left, this is one helix, this is another helix. So that is what they meant by double helix. One helix to the one helix, another helix. So the DNA structure was estimated to be double helix structure. No, the the double helix actually in recent, this is just short form of the helix, it's a long chain. The double helix is actually actually looks like two interlocked bed spring. If you have used the old fashioned bed before, they normally have spring, spiral spring that makes the bed to bounce. So they elucidated that it looked like two interlock bed spring. A bed spring, you know, two. When you have two of that interlocking, like you have another one. But they then interlock. That is what they elucidate with structure of the DNA to actually look like. And what these two bed spring that interlock is actually joined, is joined in between. This is one, this is another one, is joined in between by phosphodiester bond. Phosphodiester bond connects the right helix to the left helix. They are joined by phosphodiester bond. In, and in this phosphodiester bond, phosphate group form a bridge between OH group on two adjacent sugar residue. Phosphate group, this is a phosphate group. Phosphate group form a bridge 
on this structure, on this particular structure, you know, this is a structure, this is another structure, phosphate group form a bridge be between two adjacent, this is one, this is one nucleotide, okay, this is one nucleotide, this is another nucleotide down here, it is the phosphate group that form the bridge between adjacent nucleotide using OH, using OH bond, using what? OH bond, using OH group, okay, so phosphate group forms a bridge between OH group on two adjacent sugar, this, this is one sugar up there, this is another sugar up there, the same thing is, is can be seen, this one sugar here, this is another sugar here, you can see that it is a phosphate group that is forming the bridge between adjacent, between adjacent sugar residue. Now, the two bed spring, which are double helix, are held by hydrogen bond. The two bed spring, one bed spring, another bed spring, they are held by hydrogen bond in which in which two electronegative atoms share a proton between the bases. Now, let me quickly recap. On this helix, Adjacent nucleotides, they are held by phosphodiester bond in which a phosphate group forms the bridge. Adjacent nucleotides, no, please take note of that. Adjacent nucleotides are held together by um, are held together by phosphodiester bond in which a phosphate group forms the link, form the link in between them. Now connecting the two bridge, connecting the two springs together, they are connected. These two springs, they are connected by hydrogen bond in which two electronegative atoms share a proton between the bases. You can see that it is the basis, nitrogenous basis here, is, that is connected to the nitrogenous base here. And then there is a nitrogen bond that connects the two nitrogen bases. It is via the nitrogen base that the two springs are connected. Via the nitrogen base, and they are connected via and uh, we are an hydrogen bond. We are an hydrogen bond. And hydrogen bond are usually very weak bonds. They are usually very weak bonds. They are um, about three percent the strength of a of a normal covalent bond. The, if a covalent bond is hundred percent, hydrogen bond are very weak. They are like three percent the strength of a covalent bond. And the reason for this weakness in strength is because it is useful doing the function of a DNA, doing the function of a DNA in hereditary. The weak hydrogen bond assists for easy replication, for easy replication during, during hereditary, during replication of hereditary material. Please take note of that. Hydrogen bonds are formed by pairs of pairs of bases, and each pair, each pair base consists of one purine base and one pyrimidine base. They are paired following certain rules. Take note of what I just said. The hydrogen bond that connects one bed spring with another bed spring, they are usually between two nitrogen bases. And these two nitrogen bases are usually one purine base and one pyrimidine base. You will see that this is a double polygon. This is a single polygon. The double polygon, like I said, is a purine. The single polygon is a pyrimidine. So, and then a nitrogen, a nitrogen bond is forming between them. So, and uh, they are the the pattern. I need to rub this off now. The pattern through which they appeared is a universal um, is a is, is a universal standard. Usually, um, an A paired with a T. And a G paired with a, a C in DNA. This is the rule through which the pairing takes place. An A pairs with a T, and a G pairs with, with a C. That is the rule through which the pairing normally occurs. I haven't established this basic um, fact in the structure of DNA. I also want to mention that. The two spring in a DNA actually runs in opposite direction. The two springs that makes up the DNA structure runs in opposite direction. One of the springs 
run from a three prime to a five prime end in five prime direction. Why the other one run from a five prime, but run from a five prime to a three prime direction? From a three prime to a five prime direction. Why this one run from a run from a five prime to a three prime direction? And this running in various in in opposite direction is referred to as anti-parallel. So a DNA structure is said to be and a DNA structure is said to be anti the the, the helix the, the helixes in DNA structure they are said to be anti-parallel. Parallel. They are anti-parallel to each other. One runs from five prime to three prime, the other one runs from three prime to five prime. So that is how they run. That is how the DNA structure run. One runs from five prime to three prime, and the other one runs from three prime to five prime. I also want to mention that the bond, the bond between the hydrogen bond between the A and the T is usually a double bond. The hydrogen bond between the A and the T is a double bond, whereas the hydrogen bond between the G and the C is a triple bond. Is a what? Is a triple bond. Is a what? Is a triple bond. So, like I said, um, between the A and T, there are double bonds. Between the G and C, there are triple bonds. That makes on a on on a, on a DNA strand, DNA strand that have more G and C pair is usually more stable, more stable than DNA strands that have AT pairing. AT pairing because of the triple bond. Now, quickly note this um, dimension. Quickly note this dimension in DNA structure. A complete cycle, a complete cycle in DNA, a complete cycle in DNA is 34 Armstrong. A complete cycle in DNA, like a single cycle is 34 Armstrong. The diameter of a cycle in DNA is 20 Armstrong. 10 base pairs, approximately 10 base pairs, 10 base pairs between the two strands usually form a cycle. And then the distance between two pairs, between two pairs, one pair, another pair, or we can say between the ladders, between, the two, between two ladders on a, on a cycle, the distance between two pairs 